I'm back. Yay! Um, if you have watched any of my videos, you'll know that I was here back in September with the same van. It was honestly just phenomenal. I had the most incredible time. This trip is going to be a little different. There is only four to five hours of daylight um, in Iceland at the moment, hence the fact that it is half ten and the sun is only just rising. So it's going to be uh, shorter daylight hours, much colder, <laughs> um, and I'm going to go and see a lot of the things that I didn't get to see the first time around. I'm so, so happy to be back. Let's see what happens. Iceland precisely for five hours and I've just flown my drone into the sea. It's always have gonna have happened at some point. I just wish it had happened like towards the end of the trip, not like five hours into it. So I could have at least got some nice drone footage. Anyway, onwards and upwards, but from this moment on, there will be no more drone footage, I'm afraid. Which is such a shame, but hey ho. Worst things have happened, it's all good. Good morning, I survived my first night in Iceland, despite the most insane winds and rain. The van was like being blown all over the place. I mean, <laughs> not all over the place, it was like rocking a little bit. <laughs> I am just about to set off. I've got a two and a half hour drive to, what's it called? Snaysfell's Nest Peninsula. Nailed it. It is home to Kirkjafell, which is the pointy mountain that I was so desperate to see last time I was here and didn't manage to fit in. So yeah, two and a half hour drive. And then hopefully just as I get there, the sun will be rising and then I can start my little road trip for the day. Oh, yeah. I can't not skate on a frozen lake while I'm in Iceland. So, um, yes, I've changed my outfit. Got to my first stop, which is this famous black church called Budakirkja. First sighting of Kirkjafell. There she is. This is the flat side. You can't see it. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, just pulled over to look because I was too excited. <laughs> sun is just kind of about to set so this is my last bit of daylight for the day but it's so weird having like such little daylight feels like you've like hardly got any feels like the day just goes really quick <laughs> so i'm gonna leave kirkjafell and i've just found a campsite which is two hours away which is taking me back kind of south towards Reykjavik. i'll get there about 6 p.m so i can have a nice like chilled evening so yeah see ya Good morning, so it's day three. Um, we'll see what happens today. I don't really know where I'm going. <laughs> I've just got to my first stop of the day, 
which is the geyser. Geyser? Geyser, geyser. I think it's geyser. We're gonna go with that. Let's go. Oh my god. I am freezing cold. I'm drenched. The guys, it was fun, but it obviously standing still for a very long time just to catch the eruption. I'm freezing. I'm gonna go warm up before I, so I can. I can't talk. Okay, I've warmed up. I can now talk. <laughs> I'm heading to Gold Fossils. So I've just got to Skogafoss campsite. It is empty. There is no one here. And I'm just baffled by that. This I thought this would be, even this time of year, I thought this would be like busy. I much prefer when I'm in a van by myself to like be in a campsite with other camper vans and some kind of civilization. I don't like just parking in the corner of like a really completely dark car park in the middle of nowhere. But it's all good. I have packed up. I'm gonna cook some pasta and I'm gonna watch a movie and um, I found one shop in Iceland that sells wine and I got myself a little wine. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll be fine. Just being a bit of a scaredy pants. So I will see you tomorrow on day four and we'll see Skogafoss hopefully. Bring so it's 20 past 10, it's not yet fully light, um, so I'm just having a hot chocolate and today I'm going to actually just get some walking in, which will be nice, and then potentially head to another waterfall nearby and then tonight I've booked some really exciting accommodation for tonight, so Exciting day, day four. Let's go. I'm off to find. Gavernifoss, which is um, next to Skogger. I'm drenched and I'm freezing cold, but that was so much fun. I am starving, it's two o'clock, I'm gonna make some lunch and then probably head to my Airbnb because I wanna get there when it's light because I would like to actually see it. Look, how cool is that? That's my um, accommodation for the night. So this is upstairs. This is where you can hopefully watch the northern lights from. It's so cool. Probably just gonna be chilling here all night. <laughs> Okay, so I've just got to a place called Hurunalaug, which if I'm correct, just up here over the hill is a secret little hot spring. I think I'm in the right place. I'm gonna go explore. I'm taking my swimsuit because there is no one around and there's been no one for miles. 
and I think I might have it to myself in this incredible winter wonderland, which would be pretty amazing. So, fingers crossed. That was honestly one of the coolest experiences I've ever had. It is my last day and I am right outside the Laugavatn Fontana Spa, which is a geothermal baths and sauna. I'm going to treat myself to a spa morning, which I think I fully deserve on my last day. Uh, the weather is a bit crazy. Fully snowing. This is my accommodation for the night. It is a bubble uh, with a bed. There's the bed, there's my head torch. I, I can't really show you anything because it's pitch black. The point is that there's no light pollution so you can see the five million stars above. This is it, this is the end of my trip and gotta say, what a way to end my trip in this incredible little bubble. Um, I am up at 4am to drive two hours back to Keflavik to the airport to catch my flight so good night from me in my little bubble oh it's bright ouch yeah Shit. interestingly they I can't talk on the thing belly that's a strange word. What's it called? God knows. The West Side. <laughs> the West Side. Snaze. Snaze fell gel. No. <laughs> what is it called? That's it. <laughs>